Hey everyone, it's Mark here from Offworld Empire. Sam is still away. He is in Hawaii doing his NASA thing, so that's pretty cool. Um, so it's just me today, uh, but I wanted to just talk to you guys about something really cool that's happened in the last couple of weeks. Before I dive into that, just to apologise for the quality or you know lack thereof for this video. Uh, this is still not not quite the final format for the new the new show. Uh, that's going to be coming in the pipeline soon. Uh, plenty to talk about when Sam get, gets back, so I'm looking forward to both of us uh, getting together again and talking about some really, really cool stuff to do with science and technology and the future and everything. Uh, but what has happened in the last couple of weeks, um, well, last month or so actually, is I'm sure as a lot of you have no noticed, we've had a few comments, people pointing this out to us, is that the uh, M Drive paper, NASA's M Drive paper, has been published, finally. So it was leaked online a couple of weeks ahead of its publishing in a kind of uh, one of the review copies of it. So that wasn't the actual final copy. I did scan it at that point, but I waited until you know the actual full paper was out before really diving into it and, and pulling it apart. And um, so I found it a pretty fascinating read and going to just talk through it a little bit here. Obviously, when Sam's back, we're going to do a, a full video about this, really dissect, dissect it, talk about what it means for the future and you know whether it's really delivered what we hope it was going to deliver we did a little um preview video for it uh back in september or something when it was first announced the publication was announced and um we wanted to think about how our speculations are kind of tied in with what's actually happened and what was actually in this paper so we'll do that and and lots more coming um but i i wanted to just to just run through it with you guys now just because i read it and i'm super excited about about the paper so, for those of you that don't, might not know, the M drive is essentially just this concept that was put forward by, uh, or initially by Roger Scheuer, who's a British engineer, I believe, and um, it's essentially just a like a, a truncated cone of copper that you um, induces like resonance frequency microwave field inside it. So it's a bunch of microwaves resonating in a certain way inside the cavity and. He claims, and a lot of people claim, that you can this thing produces thrust in a certain direction. So if you imagine a truncated cone, the pointy end, or the actual, you know, the, the smaller end, is, a, is, a, is supposed to pr uh, produce thrust in that direction. And this is such a, a kind of crazy and revolutionary claim because there's no propellant being expelled. So what it seems to be doing is something like essentially breaking the third law of thermodynamics, Newton's third law, which is, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It seems like it's doing something along the lines of, you know, like lifting itself up in a chair. Like imagine if you could do that, like just carrying yourself by picking yourself up in a chair and just kind of floating around. Obviously, you can't do that. You need to push down on the floor. But so it seems like it's doing something kind of along those kind of lines. It's just a, a really mad thing. People are talking about it breaking physics and maybe it's this kind of new branch of physics that we don't understand. Other people think that maybe you can explain it without breaking Newton's third law without, and still conserving momentum, which is the crucial thing here. But anyway, um, this is this paper is, I think, the first published data paper, right? So we've had, I think, Scheuer published something about the concept before, but this is the first time that we've really seen a proper peer-reviewed experimental paper on this and actual data. There's a published method out there now from this paper that people can go back and build on. And, uh, you know, now we have something to pull apart. Like there's, there's actually some measurements there. And we, we knew from the um, sort of leaks that happened back in sort of August, September, that the punchline of the paper was gonna be this measurement of 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt. So a millinewton is a measure of force and kilowatts how much power they're putting in in terms of microwaves. It's actually not, they're putting far lower than that. Once you calculate it up, it's 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt. And they say in this paper that you can't explain that they're measuring that force consistently and you can't explain it through any other means, you know, like some some form of experimental error or something that's not been controlled properly in the experiment. And obviously that's the controversial thing, because if that's true, if it is doing what they're saying it's doing, it's producing thrust and you could mount it on a spacecraft and with just electrical power, a microwave and a microwave generator you can just accelerate indefinitely. So that's the punchline of the paper. That, that's right, that, that leak was right. 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt, which is absolutely tiny. 
you know, compare it to the Hall thruster, which is an ion thruster that's in use now, something like 60 millinewtons per kilowatt. Um, but even so, you know, the ion thruster is expelling propellant. There's actually material being passed out the back of this of the ion thruster, the Hall thruster. This doesn't have that. So even the tiny, 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 tiny thrust that they're getting from one point from putting in a kilowatt of power, which is a lot, they're getting 1.2 millinewtons out of that. Even that is valuable because, again, with just solar panels, you know, you could power this thing indefinitely. So that's what they're claiming. And they, you know, the experimental setup in the paper is pretty straightforward um, on the face of it. Obviously, there's a lot of complexity because they're trying to tease out all the possible sources of experimental error. But uh, basically, they mount this thing on what's called a torsion pendulum, which is just like a, a, a thing that has a pivot. It's a pendulum that has a pivot and allows them to measure tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of thrust. Uh, they measure the thrust by with a, with a laser. It's like an optical sensor, so that it measures tiny amounts of displacement in this pendulum when any, any force is applied to it. They have a, a calibration device on there, which actually creates force, a known amount of force, through some kind of electrostatic interaction. So what they do in the experiment is they turn on this calibration device, and you see on these plots that you put in the paper, this little blip of displacement as the calibration device kicks in and then that gets turned off and the, and the pendulum comes back to its resting point. Then they turn on the M drive and then you see this another big displacement actually in the opposite direction for most of the plots. And then they turn the M drive off and the, and the displacement comes back to the center. So that's what they're saying is this thrust produced by the microwaves inside this cavity. They flip the cavity round and get the thrust in the opposite direction. They even line the cavity up with the pendulum to see, you know, if you can get measure thrust in that direction and no thrust at all. So that's actually one of the crucial controls because the magnetic uh, resonance frequency inside the cavity could be generating some like electrostatic or magnetic interactions with, you know, the cables or just like the, the chamber that they're doing the experiments in. So the fact that when you turn this thing around, first in the opposite direction and then lining it up with the pendulum itself, the fact that you don't get thrust in that direction means that it's, it rules out those magnetic interactions as well. And they also rule out atmospheric uh, or, or air currents as a, as, a, as a source of this like tiny displacement because they do it in vacuum, hard, like really, really hard vacuum, as well as in atmosphere. And they're measuring pretty much the same thrust in both of those situations, which is that's pretty convincing. They're really careful with vibration. Um, they even say in the paper, which is pretty nuts, that on windy days in the Gulf of Mexico, waves can, you know, just waves out, out, out at the sea can uh, cause deflections in the pendulum that are too great to, you know, to, to pick their experimental data out of it. So they haven't been doing it on windy days. So that just goes to show how, how hot they are on, you know, they're in, I think, Johnson Space Center, which is Houston, which is roughly coastal. I mean, it's a coastal city. And um, so, so, I mean, it's by the sea, but still the fact that, you know, their experimental setup is so um, precise that they can actually measure wave action in the Gulf of Mexico, pretty nuts. They also talk about other sources of this displacement that could be kind of erroneous and not really the drive itself producing thrust which is like photons, for example, escaping from the cavity. There's a thing called a photon rocket, which essentially is just something being propelled through photons. It's like a bit like a light sail, that kind, that kind of idea, but like a reverse light sail. Um, and they, they claim uh, that the thrust they're getting is orders of magnitude higher than you would get from that. So that, I mean, that's fair enough. That's pretty convincing. Outgassing from literally materials inside the vacuum chamber or inside the cavity itself being um, ablated by the microwaves and releasing gases could also produce a tiny bit of thrust. I mean, the level of thrust they're measuring is so tiny that all of these factors could be in play. But again, they say that, and that, you know, they cite some stuff to say that uh, these, these would be orders of magnitude lower than what they're measuring. So again, that's pretty cool. However, my main issue with this paper is and I know a few other people who have also mentioned this, is the thermal expansion problem, right? So they even admit that they haven't properly ruled out thermal expansion as a cause of this displacement, which they're saying is thrust. So thermal expansion, basically, as you put microwaves into this 
um, I'm making it sound like you just put microwaves in. You know, as you turn on the drive, um, it can slightly change the thermal properties. It expands slightly. The center of gravity of the pendulum changes just a tiny bit, and you get the displacement of the laser, right? So you're measuring thrust, which actually isn't thrust. Um, they say that the movement displacement you get from thermal expansion is would be way slower than what they're looking at. And what they're looking at looks more like the calibration pulses that I was mentioning. I'm not convinced by that. I mean, I don't, I'm not an experimental physicist. I don't know what these materials, how they behave when you heat them up and stuff. But the calibration pulse, so if you look at this paper, which is totally, I think it's open access. I mean, anyone can go and have a look at it. Plots like figure seven, I think is one of them. You see the calibration pulse and you see the drive getting turned on and they look pretty different, especially when they get turned, when the drive gets turned off. Calibration pulse, the displacement just goes back to the center immediately. Whereas the, when you turn the drive off, there's like this long, slow, gradual decay of the displacement, which I don't know. I mean, maybe they're right. And that's still faster than you'd expect from, um, uh, from thermal expansion, but they didn't could put a control in. It would have been really, really easy. Well, it would have been, it would have been really, really useful. And almost, I think almost crucial to put in a control for thermal expansion, like, a different shaped cavity or something that's not the cone that, that you can heat up with microwaves in exactly the same way and say, okay, this is what thermal expansion looks like. And it's, this is not what our data look like. You know, you might be able to subtract that from their data. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that's a bit weird. And I'm not sure why they didn't put that in. They seem quite convinced that it's not thermal expansion, which is fair enough. They know more about it than I do, but it would have just been really nice to see a control. And what do they think is going on? The discussion section, I mean, it, it's, it's, they cite some pretty uh, theoretical, like quantum mechanics explanations for this that are, that are trying to explain it without having to, you know, um, invoke like new kind of spooky physics so that they're talking about how you might be able to, this might be causing thrust without, well, while still conserving momentum by like creating talk against the quantum vacuum and stuff. I mean, I'm just saying words right here. Like I don't actually know the implications of that because I don't know the maths, but um, that's what the kind of things that they're delving into in the discussion to try and explain it. If it's thermal expansion though, I mean, all of that stuff is just hand wavy. So again, I'd like to see a control for that. Um, so what does this mean though, this paper? I think, I think it's a really, I think it's a bit of a landmark paper in the sense that now there is, as I said earlier, a published method for this that's out there that other people can build on and even either produce these controls that I'm talking about with the thermal expansion or build on what they've done, maybe tweak the design slightly, start to tease apart what's really going on here. And also now we can see, we'll probably start to see like modeling papers coming out, people looking at the quantum mechanics and implications of this. And um, the Holy Grail, what we really wanna see is an experiment in space because Problems like thermal expansion aren't such an issue in space. I mean, a, a copper cavity slightly expanding in space is not going to make a spacecraft accelerate. Whereas 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt of thrust is. So that is a, an experiment that we all want to see happen. And maybe having a paper like this out there published will help, you know, people get the funding together, or whatever. Like it makes it, it makes it a better case, a more solid case to get that done. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's on the horizon. So, um, yeah, I mean, to sum up, I think it's very cool to see this paper out. It's really, really good to be able to like sink your teeth into some actual data and, um, and, you know, read the details of what they've done here, which is, you know, they've tried really hard to minimize all sources of error. Uh, however, I feel like there's still a bit of a question mark hanging over this whole thing. I don't feel, uh, like I've been convinced it, the paper hasn't either completely refuted it and said, oh, the M drive is a load of bollocks or the M drive absolutely works. Welcome to the new era of space exploration. <laughs> I still feel like the same question mark is hanging over it that, that, it, that, that was for me before the paper. Um, but hey, you know, that's just the way science goes sometimes. And, and we'll have to see, you know, what happens next. Um, I really hope it works because it would be absolutely amazing for getting around the solar system cheaply. Uh, so, you know, and it, and possibly other implications as well. Uh, but we'll have to just 
hold out judgment and wait and see. So yeah, uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And when Sam's back, we'll do another video about this in a bit more detail. And of course, a whole lot of other stuff that we want to be talking about. Plenty of episodes in the pipeline. So if you want to hear cool discussions about science and technology on the future of civilization, all that fun stuff, then subscribe and share the video. And of course, I want to hear what you guys think about this. So in the comments, we'll read the comments, we'll reply to the comments. Uh, keep them coming. We love to see the discussions. I want to know what you thought about this paper specifically. So um, yeah, until next time. Cheers.